Hey, what's up everyone? It's Brandon Keith Avery, and I want to welcome you to JustMyPen.net, where today you will get my review on Transporter Refueled. Now off the top of my head, I can't count how many films have made it to the fourth installment in their franchise. So when I heard that Transporter Refuel was coming out, initially I was excited, I was a little bit curious, but then when I learned that Jason Statham wasn't attached, I lost interest. With that being said, that does not mean that the film cannot still deliver. Now I was reluctant going into this movie with a uh, high skepticism. Uh, I did see all the trailers. One reason I felt this way was the uh, director Camille Del Mare. He did that horrific movie Brick Mansions, which unfortunately portrayed the late Paul Walker. I can say that this director's his second time up the bet is a vast improvement from what he did with Brick Mansions. Now this time around with the transporter, we don't have Jason Statham. We have this new gentleman named Ed Screen, who I know that he was uh, in the Game of Thrones back in 2013, and I really don't remember him from that. Something that this sequel was able to accomplish that I appreciated was the relationship that Frank had with his father. That was nowhere to be found in the last films. This time, Frank Martin's father, Frank Sr., is being played by Ray Stevenson. Yeah, you remember that guy? If you know this guy, you know he played in the Marvel Knights live action series Punisher Warzone that came out a few years ago. Wasn't that good, but you know. So going into this movie, I wasn't expecting much. I knew Jason Statham wasn't gonna be in it, and if you're gonna replace Jason Statham, it's pretty obvious that the film is gonna be a step down. And just to be honest, all the Transporters films are not just completely amazing in the first place. I really did like the first two. The third one was completely disappointing and I'll at least say now that Refueled is better than Transporter 3. I just went in wanting a fun popcorn, a little action film towards the end of the summer. And for the most part, I got just that. Even though overall I enjoyed the film, there were points where it did get a bit too ridiculous to the point I can't bear it over a long amount of time. I mean, some of the stunts in this movie are pretty good, like I said, but to have good stunts and to have good stakes, it has to make logical sense. And I have to give the film two thumbs down as far as that is concerned with the writing. Because there were just too many instances where if someone in the movie would have used their brain, you could have escaped a death-defying situation. I don't know about you, but me personally, I would rather go through the fence than going over a barbed wire fence. I mean, that's just me. And the previous films, all we knew is that he was very peculiar. He followed his rules. He was very neat and he dropped the car, but there was not too much history of, about his backstory. Bringing in his father, played by Ray Stevenson, did shed a little bit light on that. Now I'm not saying it is the best story in the world, but it is something different that I didn't get in the past. And for that, I liked it. As far as Ray Stevenson's portrayal as uh, Frank Martin's Father, he did a de decent job. He's a suave kind of guy and has all the confidence in the world. Sometimes his confidence is misplaced and it doesn't fit within the scene that he's in. I mean, if someone is getting kidnapped, I want to feel like they're actually afraid and that they're going to die. Not the self-acknowledgement that they know they're just going to get out of the situation A-OK -okay, and everything's going to be fine. When you do things like that, it brings the film down because it, 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 it's, it doesn't go down. It's just on a plateau. There's no ups, no downs. It's just always staying on a plateau. And that's not anything that I want to go to the theater and witness. As far as the action and the punches and kicks, they did serve you that. And like I said before, it is a step down, but it also succeeded when in areas that the last Transporter 3 fell. Something that I hated in Transporter 3 is that it seemed like Jason Statham wasn't even fighting anymore. It seemed like he was just stripping off his clothes modeling while trying to beat up bad guys where everything is blatantly choreographed. Yes, all fighting in all movies is choreographed, but it shouldn't be that apparent to the audience member. But this time around, the action was okay. Um, it was a little half-assed at times, but then again, what do you expect? They still took it a bit too far with all the stunts. Some of the stunts in this movie are so ridiculously impossible that I don't even think Superman or The Flash could pull it off. I also cannot ignore the fact that Frank Martin wants to get out of a fuel car to have a fist fight in the street instead of just staying in the car, 
pushing the pedal to the metal and running over the enemy. This is just another example of what I was talking about, about the bad writing. But with my expectations being low, it didn't bother me that much. For the most part, the film had redeeming qualities. I mean, and it was overall entertaining. I mean, you can't go into this movie expecting it to be competing with Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol or Rogue Nation. If you have that mindset, you're going to be disappointed. I gone went in thinking that this movie was going to suck and walked out thinking that it was okay. The movie also had a decent ending and climax to something much to where I haven't seen before. Usually films like this are as predictable as the sun rising on the next day but I liked the wrenches that were thrown in the plot just to twist it up a little bit and it put me into a point to where I didn't know what to expect. I'm not saying that this is jaw dropping story revealing or something that should be spread among the masses but I didn't know how the film was going to end. You know, I nearly almost gave this film a B minus but they just created a cardinal sin at the end that just dropped my mood completely low and that just goes to the stunts. This film had a number of get out of jail free stupidity cards to use and they used too many of them up before halftime even came. What made the film good in the beginning is it knew what it was and it was being self-acknowledged but towards the end it just tried to reach too far and got lost in space. It was an okay film that I don't know if I can recommend to others but if you found any enjoyment in the past transporter films I'm sure you'll find some enjoyment of this one too. If I were to give this movie a rating out of 1 out of a 10 I would give it a 6. It, it would have been much higher but it was the horrible stunts at the end that dropped it that low. Well guys that's just my opinion of Transporter Refueled and I would love to hear yours as well. So go ahead and give me that comment below down in the comment section whether you agree or disagree with me. If you like this video go ahead and give me that thumbs up. I would appreciate it. It would really help me out or you can give me that thumbs down. That's perfectly fine. Go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you like, uh, you can find me on Facebook at, or Instagram and Twitter at Just My Opinion 84. Again, guys, thank you for tuning in to Just My Opinion where you just heard mine and I would love to hear yours as well. Just because I like a film does not mean that you have to like a film and vice versa. So then again, until next time, guys, I really do appreciate it. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.